hello 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 welcome back to my channel it's your girl sharon aka the melon nostalgic runner we are back again for a review of the real housewives of orange county season 18 and this is reunion part two and what i must say so far um i'm doing this reunion slightly different than i've done or this episode slightly different than i've done before i'm reviewing it by segments so in the past and i know i my videos are like that in general but normally i've watched a whole entire show and then i review it this time i'm just gonna do it by segments because um full disclosure i'm actually getting ready to go out out and about for the evening and yes i know we're late um i'm late to this like um it's coming out late saturday but better late than never but any anyways the reason behind it is that and i'm also getting ready like i just got done putting my hair in twisties i got my wig cap on we're gonna put our good wig on and beat the face and go outside anyway <laughs> that's not why you're here without further ado let's get into it now this episode continues where we left off where it's jen and emily and they're going back and forth forth and back and jen this version of jen i love her i love her i love her i love her and also too what i will say finally I feel like the first part of the reunion, Andy was barely there. Now he's actually being a host this time. Like, he's finally stopped Emily from, like, overly chiming in, which, thank freaking God, because she was getting on my nerves with that. But long story less long, Jen actually ended up eating her up. She's like, girl, why is this your business? Because she's like, I think you owe me this. I'm like, I don't owe you anything. I was like, exactly. Why are you so stuck in Jen's business? Um, hopefully they revisit why Emily has is so triggered by Jen because it clearly is a thing. But we'll see if that happens or not. But anyway, Jen ate her up and it's like, girl, it's not your business, none of your concern. And also to Shannon was hopping in there, chiming in, had her back too, um, which was great. And it's definitely a clear division between one side of the couch versus the other. Because then we have Heather chiming in stating, look, the reason why we are, you know, saying all this stuff is because we have genuine concerns when it comes to like you and Ryan. And really, we have concerns when it comes to Ryan. We don't want you to get hurt. We don't want you to be in a position where you're not okay. And one thing is true is, okay, two things can be true. I feel like a lot of ladies do feel that way, including the side of the couch that um, Jean, that um, Jen is on. The difference is that side of the couch that like Heather, G, um, Heather, Emily, and Tamara's on is it doesn't come off as love; it comes off as hate. And um, I wish Jen was said that to them. But she took the high road for the most part because really her venom isn't really towards Heather at all. Um, it's towards really, I guess, really for the most part, Tamara, but then Emily by proxy because hell, like Emily has been like Tamara's mouthpiece like this whole entire time has been annoying. Anyway, so after that, um, as she says that, Shannon actually chimes in is like, look, not everyone here feels that way. Like, I'm happy for Jen. If I if she likes it, I love it. And we're just gonna have her back. And I was like, thank you. And so that pretty much ends that. And then from there, then we transition to how Tamara behaves. Cause it goes back to Tamara and her behavior and really Tamara and Jen's relationship and child flaws victory. Like Jen, Jen had her. Um, Tamara had nothing to say. Even when it came to like the cease and desist situation, because that did get brought up about how Ryan um, served Tamara's cease and desist letter. Tamara had a whole bunch of had a whole entire lie about that ready to go. But we know why that happened. And really, at the end of the day, um, what got me is Tamara is so delusional and so stuck in her toxic ways and thinking she knows what she's doing, where this whole entire reunion um both first part and this part she just keeps getting caught in lies and she got caught in a lie again when she was mentioning um her reasoning behind this her reasoning behind that and then jen caught her in another lie I was like you know you made such a ass of yourself at katie's house 
um, grilling Ryan and all that good stuff. Eddie wouldn't even sleep in the same bed as you. And then she was like, no, that's not true. And then Gina <laughs> was like, no, actually, that's true. You actually literally said that to me the next day. And I don't think Tamara was prepared for the fact that 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 other side of the couch that Jen is on, they all have Jen's back. Like front, back, side, and everything. And Jen actually is fighting back. Tamara cannot handle a Jen fighting back. And it, it's not working. It's not landing how she thinks it's landing. And then um, after that, towards the end of this little first part, um, the subject of Tamara going to therapy comes back up. She's starting the next day. And I love the non-words happening. The non-words of really Shannon and Jen just rolling their eyes, knowing it's, that Tamara is full of it. And then even the reasoning behind why she's going to therapy, because Andy asked the question that we all want to know, why are you going to therapy now? Why'd you wait this long? And it was not a reason that someone would give if they really are trying to, for someone who really thinks they have an issue. It was more like, you know what? I don't like the public backlash, so this is why I'm going. That was literally what she said without saying that. And we, we know that's why she's doing it. Um, oh, also the other thing came up was Gina. Oh, um, J Jen, um, I think Andy, I think Andy was the one who asked Jen, like, hey, is there a reason why you believe Shannon and her apologies versus Tamara's and her Tamara and her apologies? And she explained it. And then um, they show a scene of Shannon taking accountability. And then freaking Emily had the a mitigated goal to try to take credit for that. It's like, girl, find your own business. And the good news is no one let that really go all the way in. Even Gina didn't really have her back all the way when it came to that because we know Gina and Emily are close. But, like, this it's kind of odd that at this point in time they're on opposite sides of the couch. So Gina was like, I think she still would have actually apologized, though. And so Emily, girl, truthfully, I don't know if she is needed next season. I'm just, I'm just saying. But anyway... That's what happened the first part of the um, of the segment of the reunion. Let's continue. So next um, part of the reunion, we talked briefly about um, the fun parts. You know, when they do kind of the fun segments and they were basically just talking about um, people's horrible London accents and the trip to London. And then also the conversation about the turbulence came up along with Emily brushing her teeth with Dr. Pepper. It kind of came and went. So that was kind of one of the things that they talked about next. And then the main thing that came back up was Jen and her finances and basically everyone getting on her about that. And um, the takeaway that happened with this was that, um, yeah, Jen and Gina had a rough patch at the very beginning of the season, and they clearly made up. Um, more was discussed between them two when it comes to everything that happened, so they have an understanding. And this is why we're seeing this, like, basically this friendship that has transpired since. And I think it also happened during the season um, because Gina, I feel like she really did feel a certain way at the beginning, but then she, you know, I think she kind of also realized she was kind of being hypocritical and was like, okay. And, but Gina said what triggered her literally was the glam. I was like, girl, um, which we knew that because the glam was like one of the main things that they talked about constantly. And then they did talk briefly again about Emily and Jen's relationship and Emily, I know other reviewers have said it. Shout out to the Brooke Ashley. But child, girl, get some therapy. Like, I just, her visceral and just guttural reaction every time she is triggered by someone who reminds her of her mom. It is unhealthy. It's weird. It's weirdo behavior. Um... They kind of brushed over it and didn't go into it too much. 
um, because Jen's a forgiving person. But yeah, I guess that kind of got made up and there was that on that. And then they did discuss like Jen's clapbacks on social media when it comes to certain things and including her Malibu Barbie um, bathing suit that she had on. Because, I mean, let's face it, Jen is Malibu Barbie. Um, and we love that for her. Um, anyway, and then from there, the subject of Jen and the dress came up that Ryan purchased for the tea party. And Heather, here, here goes Heather again, um, making it a thing where she's not being a mean girl. There is more context to it. Which I was curious to understand what the context was because I guess at the very, we did find out a little extra tidbit where before the season started, Heather was actually like legitimately helping Jen out with her finances and Jen didn't really take any of that advice. But <clears throat> I guess my whole thing is just because you do that doesn't necessarily mean someone's going to take your advice, if at all. And so Heather... It kind of adds more context to why Heather was so shady towards Jen. It had a lot to do with that. But at the same time, she said she was being gossipy, but she wasn't being mean girly. And it's like, girl, it's mean girly. And um, even Katie chimed in and said, girl, you're being mean girl. That was being, that was very mean girly. And honestly, it's up to the person who receives the message as the interpreter if you're being a mean girl or not. And in my opinion, I think she was being a mean girl. And, um, I think this, this is going to lead to, um, round what, I don't know, round two of the reunion, at least of Katie and Heather. So then, um, it actually didn't really lead to much. It kind of just dropped it. Um, I thought it was going to lead to another Heather versus Katie situation. It got dropped. Um, from there, we then did talk about Jen and her ex-husband and the fact that she's owed like she's supposed to be getting rewarded this money um as part of a divorce agreement and he's not paying it he's been dodging it and emily still forever being up in the business and playing the host hostess which is really annoying um but i i will give her grace this time Emily is softening up in the way she's been approaching things. Thank God, because she was getting on my nerves. She's asking questions that, you know, a lot of us would like to know, like, how is he able to continue to dodge and not, you know, comply with the agreement? Because he's an attorney. Um, and she was like, you know, I don't know. I, like, he just basically dodges, like, things. And so... Um, it's just been very contentious and this, that, and this, and, uh, and all the ladies go on here to try to give Jen unsolicited advice, which <laughs> was kind of annoying, but I guess with Emily, and this is why I'm like, Emily, you really need help because I don't think, I don't know what it is with Emily and I don't get it because at one minute you have Emily literally attacking this woman. And then another instance, she's like saying, no, I just want the best out of you. I know you could do it, this, that, and this. And, uh, and Jen, rightfully so, was like, I want to be the best version of myself for me. Like, I love that she kind of just shut it down. Like, girl, you're not my attorney. Like, stop it. <laughs> and so um, that kind of ended there. And then from there, we then moved on to Gina and Travis and her situation. And... A little bit more clarity of why she was so secretive at the beginning when it came to what was going on versus what we know now and um the sad thing is she doesn't see it ever getting better when it comes to the situation with travis and the um a strange wife of his because that divorce is still not finalized by the way and so it just makes me think like i don't know I don't know if you don't ever see it getting better than I don't know love is not enough at least for me I would think love is not enough and I know she has kids and they they don't have kids together but they've kind of you know have this blended family so I get that there's more involved than just them two but at the same time it's just I don't know I just don't like yes their solution that that she has right now they're still doing that but it doesn't seem like the right solution overall but anyway from there they end with that and then they go on to break 
as they go on break, um, we do see that uh, John's mouthpiece has shown up, aka Jesus Jugs, and I'm like, oh no! But at least they're getting it over with, so that part three she will not be around. So that there's that. I'm at least glad of that. But anyway, so we then see um, Shannon and Heather are talking. They're good. Heather's just making sure that they are good. And Shane's like, yes, we're good. Okay, go away. Because, <laughs> you know, this is their lunch break. And then um, Katie and Jen talk. Because Katie did mention before the break, like, hey, let's talk before the, you know, at the break. And Katie's like, did you feel a way that I kind of said something to Heather about how what she did was mean girl behavior? And Jim was like, no, I'm glad you stuck up for me because that was mean girl behavior. I actually agreed with you. And then, um... Gina and um, Emily, they were talking and they were like, I don't think that was mean girl behavior, but whatever. Um, but that's because they don't really care for Katie. So there's that. But then from there, um, Tamara goes to visit um, Alexis and then from, and they're talking and Tamara's trying to tell her, do not be John's mouthpiece. And Alexis is just still being John's mouthpiece, basically. So that's what happens. And then as also to Gina and Emily are just making fun of her saying, okay, yeah, the lunatic has to come back out. So there's that. But anyway, um, we are back on the show and now we're watching um, how really Emily feels about her body and whatnot. That's what's coming up right now at this moment. So the Emily fashion show thing came up. I'm not going to go over this very long because it was really like a non-issue. Um, because it, it, it was basically what they talked about during the season rehashed. And then that was that. And then it goes on back to Katie and the um, kid thing um, with, you know, her daughter Kylie. Um, well, we find out her daughter Kylie and Sophia and um, Tamara's daughter, they don't even hang out anymore. And then we also find out that, and then, it, then from there it goes on to like the Katie... Um, Katie's daughter and the babysitting incident and a child. Long story less long, Katie, 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 Katie. When you have help, when it comes to arguments, you got to cover. But if it's just you standing on your own, you do not have it. And I still do not understand why you thought it would be a good idea to go against Heather Dubrow like this was a tall ask like it, it's not working for you honey i'm just gonna let let you know because again heather ate her up yet again like um and because katie just doesn't have an answer for it and it's really bad and the problem is whenever this happened especially when it comes to this incident she brought emily into it and emily has heather's back when it comes to this and then Gina's kind of chiming in a little bit on the same behalf, on also the behalf of Emily. But it was just like, it, it, it was the wrong road. It was the wrong road. And no one else on that other side of the couch have anything to say because it's the lying of the kids being involved. And then we knew when we saw on that episode with um, Katie's son repeating literally that whole thing about Heather we knew that was not going to go over well, and child, it, no. Flawless victory when it comes to um, um, Heather versus um, Katie. I'm just going to say it. Child, the beatdown continues, and what we also find out here is that Katie's daughter did a whole entire TikTok, like, basically being disrespectful, calling them, like, freaking bitches and all that and using the f-bomb and everything and all the ladies are just like yo that's crossing a line crossing a line but what's getting me is that um all the ladies are saying you should you know make her take it down this end this and that and i'm like and katie had a very you know unfortunately but this is the truth her daughter's 20 she has no control over that I mean, at the end of the day, she's an adult. But if this was any other franchise, child, and, you know, I said this when it came to the Salt Lake City show, and I kind of, I mean, it originally became a thing because of the Real Housewives of New Jersey. When the, the kids who are adults tried to put themselves into housewife business, 
they're no longer kids in my opinion you should not be treating them as kids anymore now they're free game now you can you know go all in on them so i would watch that and really um yeah this if you didn't if you saw my first reunion and i mentioned that this is katie's probably last season yeah this is her last season because she is just getting destroyed at this reunion um anyway so then from there we see that they're preparing for alexis to arrive she's going to be on the couch next and so the chaos is going to continue because of alexis okay so jesus jugs has arrived and andy um they don't get into the things yet thank god so they first talk about how she now loves the name jesus jugs and of course she would because she you know it's what is her part of her fame is part like you know it's a thing so then from there they talk about um andy asked if she still as religious as she was the last time she was on the show 10 years ago um she kind of explains that but she doesn't really explain it it's like okay whatever um the talks about has her opinions changed when it comes to her religion like the religion ltb lgbtq plus and um she spins it and says well i'm not really like it's not about religious like religious is like a very harsh connotation i'm more spiritual and this whole entire time i just love the side comments was getting me this whole entire time the side comments gina and shannon are like look at emily emily just had this look on her face like this freaking bitch like the whole entire time as she's talking and i freaking love it and then um when they talk about the 10 years ago and all that um and you know her, her finally being back in the show um shannon's like of course it's her career that's all she does and then it goes from light and talking about what she's got going on which ain't really much to be honest into the whole thing when it comes to the lawsuit and her having the footage and all this other stuff and basically she's trying to clean up that john was extorting is, is extorting shannon which she is and she's trying to clean it up and try to say shannon's the one who brought it up and it's like no that's not what happened there um and we know that's not what happened like us viewers we have eyes like alexis said it first before shannon said anything and um on the show and then also too the other thing that was brought up was um the fact that they still haven't settled when it comes to the lawsuit um because of the main factor of well like he won't sign the papers they they're supposed to come up with agreement but he won't sign the papers and the whole entire time we thought this non-disparaging agreement was just shannon um it was just him, like you know john not saying anything bad about shannon but really it was supposed to be on both sides and of course john doesn't want that because he wants fame it, he wants shannon to be able to say things um like if shannon doesn't talk about him anymore he doesn't have a career anymore that when it comes to reality tv so he's just trying to be the money drainer fame hungry um get him an orange housewife you all already know how i feel about john john's basula but anyway um as this is happening sh <laughs> alexis goes immediately to defending john and literally is starting to repeat verbatim what john has said in his confessionals and all the ladies call her out we're like <laughs> and it's ridiculous so and shannon is it 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 was it was like flawless victory shannon is eating her up it's, it's so great she's like oh my gosh you're being his mouthpiece again okay congratulations it was it was hilarious so we're gonna see more of this probably and i can't wait so this basically the reunion concludes where shannon is just literally eating alexis up proves that alexis was lying about not being involved in the lawsuit with her ex-husband and really stating that that is literally has been shannon's beef with her the whole entire time and then also the other thing that she ate her up on was the fact that um she basically was like yeah 
I took your job and you're upset about that. And she's like, well, I'm back now after 10 years. And she's like, as a friend of, as a friend of, and she's like, and she's like, I've been on TV for t over 10 years or whatever the hell. That's what like, um, Alexis said, and she's like, oh, and then Shannon, the, to conclude the reunion, she's like, you're a TV star. I was like, oh my God, Shannon, get her. Like, she ate her up, and um, yeah, left no crumbs. She ate her up and left no crumbs, and um, unfortunately, this is not the last of Alexis. Part three, she's going to be on there a little bit longer, but the good news is with that is in the preview, we see that Emily gets on her too. And yeah, I don't see Alexis coming back, which hopefully she does not because child, it's been a mess. But anyway, this was a great part two reunion. I just like the season, they continue to eat and leave no crumbs. And one of the rare times in Housewives too also, this is one of those few times where they have a three part reunion. And I am so glad for it. Like they needed that three part and they are utilizing that time efficiently and very well. Um, anyway, but that does conclude the um, review. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye.